to uh, the cruising, um, Bishop Nathaniel. How are you, sir? God. It is 19 degrees in New York. Yes, sir. It's freezing. It is freezing here. Oh, man. How, um, what's the temperature reading? Uh, 19. Say that again? 19. Oh. 19 degrees. Wow, 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 wow. So, um, I guess you're... Oh, I guess you're quite fortunate in, in one sense that you went on a cruise last Tuesday, so I hope that you um, bottled up some sunshine. Yes, I went to St. Martin, I went to St. Thomas, and Nassau, Bahamas. I had a great time teaching the gospel. Very productive. All right, all right. Good, good to have you back with us, sir, for yet another Tuesday. All right, before we... Go ahead, go ahead, Bishop. I, I said we, we... Me and the brothers, we brought our wives with us, but our purpose was not to sightsee, but on the contrary, to do the work. You know? Oh. So that, it pacified the wives in one context and did the will of God in the other. <laughs> okay, so guess what? You fulfill the physical and the spiritual aspect of man. Yes, sir. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> All right. Um, Bishop, before we get into the meat of the matter, um, let's look at some topical things happening, more bombings happening around the world. But let's look at Iran, for example, uh, with this deal with the United States. What's your take on it from a biblical perspective? Well, 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 well. From a biblical perspective, like we read, I believe it was, Two weeks ago, when we read in Second Ezra chapter 15, I'll start there again for your listeners. Second Ezra chapter 15 and verse 30 says, Also the Carmanians raging in wrath. The Carmanians are Iranians. When you look up the name Carmania, it is the ancient name of Iran, okay, which was at one time also called Persia. Yes. Okay? Yes. It says also the Carmanians raging in wrath shall go forth as wild boars of the wood, and with great power shall they come and join battle with them and shall waste a portion of the land of the Assyrians. So what we see happening now, the embargo or sanctions have been lifted off of Iran. Mm -hmm. Iran is now able to purchase and sell and buy nuclear weapons. You understand? Yes. Remember, remember in Revelation 13 where it says that no man might buy or sell except you have the mark of the beast or name of the beast or the number of his name. Yes. So, the mark of the beast goes into America's policy. If you don't do what she says, you cannot buy or sell in the context of you cannot trade. That's what it's talking about. Now that Iran is doing the pity of America, now America says we will allow you to buy and sell now. You understand? So you're saying that um, America's stamp of, of approval is the mark of the beast? Yes. How? Yes, because if you disobey America in any shape, form, or fashion, the IMF, International Monetary Funding, the World Bank, America with one push of a button can shut you down totally. You cannot buy from any nation or sell to any nation. That is what we see happening in the world today. We are living in the greatest time on earth. So how how how, how do you um um uh, from a biblical perspective now how do you identify America as uh, the entity that will enforce the mark of the beast or the mark of the beast system? Ah. Uh. When you go to Revelation 18, it's a key factor because the mark of the beast that you read that Babylon would do, which is recorded in Revelation chapter 13, when you get to chapter 18, because it continues on, it tells you in chapter 18, verse 4, and I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that you be not partakers of her sins, and that you receive not of her plagues. Yes. One of the things you must realize is that the people of God 
will live in Babylon. Okay? When you read down in verse 11, watch this, watch this. And the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her, over Babylon, for no man buyeth their merchandise anymore. They list all the merchandise that would be traded with Babylon. Watch this, watch this. The merchandise of gold, silver, mm -hmm. precious stones, and pearls, fine linen, purple, silk, scarlet, fine wood, and all manner vessels of ivory, and all manner vessels of most precious wood, and of brass, iron and marble. Here's the point, verse 13. And cinnamon and odors, and ointments, and frankincense, and wine, oil, fine flour, wheat, beef, sheep, horses, and chariots, and slaves, and souls of men. Yes. So Babylon's big business would also be slavery mm -hmm. and souls of men. America, it was a chief commodity in the sale of slaves, which was us. And all nations had a hand in trading us. Yes. They had to follow America's policy. Oh, so now I see where you get it. So, um, people out there who believe, for example, like the Seventh-day Adventists, that, that would say that the Pope of Rome would um, is the Antichrist, or he sits on the, uh, on the throne in the Vatican at St. Peter's uh, Basilica, is the Antichrist. You don't share that sentiment? No. He's on, he falls under it because he's Esau. When you read 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 about the man of sin, the man of iniquity, which precepts Malachi chapter 1, it tells you Esau is the people that God has indignation against forever, and they shall be called the border of wickedness. So all of them are a part of it. It's not just the Pope of Rome. They all are, all Edomites are together, hand in hand. There's a structure there amongst them. You understand? Yes, so you're saying the the, Edom, the, the, the Edomites, uh, which is the um, the Caucasian race or the white race, um, all of them are in the mark of the beast system. That's what you're saying. Yes, yes. Now, Seventh Day Adventists, remember, it was established by a white woman called Ellen G. White. This woman was back and forth in contact with slavery herself. Many people, many black people, foolishly unadvisably, unlearnedly follow this woman's concepts. Her concept seems somewhat because she believes in keeping the service, but when you examine her origin, this white woman believed in slavery, the destruction of the black race. She went back and forth on, should I do it? Should I not do it? Maybe I should. I'm not sure today. Don't follow those people. So did the Seventh-day Adventists from your uh, studies, did they play any role in enslaving um, the Israelites who are the black people? Yes, all white people had a hand in it. All nations, as a matter of fact, the majority of the nations under the so-called white man had a hand in the destruction of us, our people, the children of Israel, all nations. Remember what Christ said in Matthew 24, and I believe it's verse 14, or verse 9, 9 and 10. It says, you shall be hated of all nations. Christ foretold the Israelites, everybody's going to hate the Israelites. And they hate us to this day. That's what we're on the bottom. All right. All right, let's move on from that. My next... Uh um question to you yesterday in your country um in america the big celebration i believe it was a federal holiday martin luther uh king's junior day um what's your take on the celebration and the life and work of martin luther king jr okay i'm about to make a lot of black people mad right now i'm about to get them very angry let me explain something to you God, the Most High, the Creator of heaven and earth, gave us 52 Sabbaths in a year to celebrate, 12 new moons, and 12 high holy days. Black people refuse to acknowledge them. Do you hear what I said? 52 Sabbaths, 12 new moons, and 12 holidays. We reject everyone, and we say, let's celebrate Martin Luther King Day. Now I'm going to read a scripture about Martin Luther King in Jeremiah 23 and verse 25. Martin Luther King is famous for his I Have a Dream speech. Is that correct? 
Yes, you are correct. Carolina 23 verse 25. I want the listeners to listen good. I have heard what the prophets said that prophesy lies in my name, saying, I have dreamed, I have dreamed. We examine that, Mr. Hyper. The most famous man who stood and said, I have a dream, I have a dream, is Martin Luther King. God says, I have heard the prophets who have lied in my name. But did Ma but Martin Luther King was not prophesying anything. Um, I think it's safe to say that I have a dream that one day I will be um, I'll see freedom for um, black people. I have a dream that one day I'll be the prime minister of Jamaica. I have a dream that one day I uh, will own my own private jet. I don't, I, I, I don't understand why you're saying that um, he's lying. Uh, a dream is something that you're looking forward to, uh, to achieving. Exactly. Now watch this. His dream also included, you forgot the pivotal point. His dream is that one day, black boys and white boys would all hands in brotherhood. That is not biblical. God prophesied. We must stand against the sons of the wicked, which is Esau. He did not tell us to follow a man's dream of hand in hand with our enemies. Christ said we must stand boldly against our enemies, even in captivity. We must do so. And this is what our, our men fail to do. Our men have failed in their plight. Our men have failed as the servants of God. That's why black men are the weakest of all men on the face of the earth. That's why we get no respect in the earth. Because we are weak. We have been dumbed down by society. But it did not the Bible, Bishop um, Nathaniel, says that we must love our neighbors as ourselves. Uh, right? And we must oh. love because love is the fulfillment of the law. Oh, very good. Let me read that law for you, please. I have to read the law. Leviticus 19.17 Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thy heart. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor and not suffer sin upon him. Thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people. That is the part we always refuse to acknowledge. Moses is referring to us, the children of our people. But we say, no, we must apply this to the enslaved master, the slave master. That is not what Moses was talking about. Moses said, love the children of your people. This is why black men kill black men. Black men disrespect black women. Black men refuse to take care of their children because we refuse to obey the basic principles in the Bible of love the children of your people. We hate that. We will, we will love and support the white man before we take care of our own people. That is our, our mind state. So that is part of the okay. When I was in Jamaica, I witnessed a Jamaican clothing store, right? Then I saw across the street, I saw another clothing store by Chinese people. Yes. That's who the majority of the people went to buy from. Well, some of probably because of a cheaper price. The, uh, the so the majority of the people purchase their items not from the black Jamaican store, but from the Chinese store. And I saw the black, I went in there. The store is almost impoverished. I said, what? I said, what's going on with the store? He said, the people refuse to shop here. They would rather shop at the Chinaman store than the store of their own people. That is what slavery has done to us. Slavery has destroyed us totally. So that is that, that is coming from the Willie Lynch syndrome. Yes. Yes, it is. The Willie Lynch syndrome. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And it is prophesied in the Bible. That's why I said Martin Luther King's dream was very dangerous. And they forget his speeches. After that speech, Mr. Hyper, he said, I fear that I integrated my people into a burning house. How come nobody talks about that? Mountaintop. How come nobody references that? He said, I feel we've been integrated into a burning house. And that is what is happening. 
This house is burning down, and we are integrated into it. We have no businesses. Our families are destroyed. No unity amongst us because we follow this man's foolish dream. Yes, but 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 on that same topic, on, on, on that same line of Martin Martin Luther King, I have a dream. He also had a very uh, popular speech too uh, when he uh, spoke about the three evils in the American society. One of them is the white backlash or the Edomite backlash that is e prevalent even today. Bill Cosby can tell you about that. Mike Tyson can tell you about that. And many others um, can tell you about that. So um, he must have uh, seen something in reality. Yes, he did. That's why just before Malcolm X was assassinated, yes. he was about to join forces with, Martin, with Malcolm X. That's when Malcolm X was assassinated. They murdered him, okay? Because Martin Luther King realized that the, the dream of unity of the races was not a biblical dream. And it was fraudulent, and it led to our destruction. That's what he saw. That's what he realized. But it was too late, because right after Malcolm X was assassinated, he himself was assassinated. Okay, so the, the evil, one of the evils that he spoke, well, I, I can remember two of them because I played that speech yesterday right here on Vibes Radio. He talked about the militarization of the United States, their love for for uh, arms, for uh, guns and so on, and for wars, and also the, um, the white backlash. And uh, those two that I remember quite vividly... Um, uh, that is high on the American agenda, uh, even today. Yes. When you look at, uh, I believe the name in uh, Madagascar is Jakarta. I could be mistaken, but there was some recent terrorist activity. Do you know what I'm making reference to? I, I, I miss I you there. I miss you there. So repeat for me, please. There, there, there was some recent terrorist activity. And I believe the name of the city is Jakarta, with a J. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Um, the terrorism took place around the United States embassies throughout the land. Mm, yes. America is a warmonger. America, remember the prophecy that Isaac gave to Esau, that they would live by the sword. America has been fulfilling that. America and Britain living by the sword, which is war. War, war, war. That's how they are the most dominant and powerful nations on the earth. But Habakkuk chapter 2 tells you because of that nature, the nations would rise up against Babylon and attempt to bring her down from within. So That's who are, what the terrorism who, is all about. So who are these nations? <laughs> Who are these nations, Bishop, that will rise up against uh, the Edomites or America um, who is leading the charge at this time and her allies? Say it again, say it again. Who, from a biblical perspective, who are the nations or which nation will lead the charge against the Edomites or the United States at this time? Uh, the nations that will form this coalition to go against America. Who are these nations? Okay. Uh, right now, right now, it is the Arab nations currently, okay, like when you read in Genesis 16 about Israel being a wild man. When you read in 2nd Ezra 15 about the, the, the dragons of Arabia shall come against Babylon. Those are two, that is a major nation. However, they lack the power to bring Babylon down. That's why in Revelation 17, watch this, Revelation 17 and verse, uh, hey, let me, let me, oh, here it goes. Revelation 17 and verse 16, it says, And the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast, the ten horns today are the, the ten common markets, the European Union. It says, They shall take the whore and burn her with fire. The, European Union is the, is, will come against America, Babylon the Great. Because Babylon the Great is so powerful, listen good, so powerful that those ten horns must unite to fight this place. Because no nation can take America down 
on its own. Saudi Arabia does not have the power to do it. Okay? Yes. There must be other nations to come against this place. But 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 the Americans and the Saudis uh, they are they are allies. Yes, right now. Yes. Right now America is allied with the European Union, the ten common market. But that will soon change. As you see Greece going through economic problems and they're realizing that America is at the heart of their financial problems, you're gonna find out that all these European nations primarily who are now currently at, at East America, they will turn on this place okay. and bring fire on this place here. Oh, so what will people like yourself in America do to escape? <laughs> hey, watch this. Marine again. Revelation 18, 4. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that yes. you be not partakers of her sins, and that you receive not of her plagues. For her sins have reached unto heaven, and God has remembered her iniquity. We as a people must repent of our sins as Israelites. And Revelation chapter 11 prophesies the deliverance of the Israelites from Babylon. Do you hear what I said? Yes, sir. All right, sir. I heard you loud and clear. We're going to take the commercial break and then we'll get into uh, the day's topic, which is the rule of man. But we, just, we have two minutes for you, Bishop, to lay the foundation. Then we're going to take the break. What's the rule of man? Um, from a biblical perspective. But just before we get there, Bishop, you have been consistently quoting from a book um, that is uh, called Ezra's. Where can you find that book? Uh, that book is in the Apocrypha. It was at one time uh, up in Jamaica, but I believe within the past five years, Jamaica has allowed people to purchase it. It was called the Maccabees, also the Book of Maccabees. Right. Okay, you're familiar with that. You can go online and order it. The original Bible published before 1666 all had the Apocrypha in it, including the Greek Septuagint, including the Latin Vulgate. They all had the book called Apocrypha. It wasn't until the 1700s that the Protestant whites made a declaration to remove it. Why? Because the slaves kept using it as fuel for insurrection. They said, take it out, and that's what they did, and they outlawed it. All right, thank you so very much, sir. And you're saying that uh, these books are very important, especially to the Israelites who are the black people. Yes, sir. Yes, so very, very important. So, so the King James Version of the Bible as we have it, um, you know, as we, as, as, as we have it here in Jamaica, you're saying a key component of the Bible is missing. Yes. When you, when you look it up, in 1826, the National Bible Society of Scotland petitioned the British Foreign Bible, Bible Society not to print the Apocrypha. You're right, sir. Bibles. You are so right with that one. Yes, sir. That's what happened. That's what happened. That and it, it cripples black people because it gives you much information about Jacob and Esau. Okay? Yes. So because we, we, we miss that, we are confused and think that the Greeks is everybody. Like I said, there's no difference between the Jew and the Greek. The Apocrypha tells you the Greeks forced the Israelites to live and talk as Greeks. Yes. That's what most Christians don't realize. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yes, yeah. I, I, I've, um, I, I've gotten a copy and I've been reading. I've been reading, and uh, you know, it's fascinating. You know that this, uh, these books were once in the Bible, and then um, you know, all of a sudden they disappeared. I also found out here in Jamaica that they dis uh, declassified these books, and you know, they were called black heart books um, in the sixties. Uh, 50s and so on you know and if they caught you with them you could go to jail yes right here in jamaica right anyhow exactly thank you so much 
Right, right you are, sir. Thank you so very much. We're going to swing into the commercial break, Bishop. Then we'll get... um Hold, hold the commercial deal, Lando. So just before we slide into the break, Bishop, um, give us your opening take on the rule of man. The rule of man, which is the rule of the Israelite man. We must lead our families, which is our wife, our children, our community under Christ's authority. The Bible says God is organizing an army in the last days. You hear what I said? He worked an army, not a Baptist church group, but an army to stand against wickedness, spiritual demon activity in high places. That is what God is looking for. All right, hold it right there, hold it right there. I see. I notice that you're getting warm, you know. When you get when you're getting warm, you, you your voice kind of change, you know. You're going into a higher notes and so on. <laughs> <laughs> I realize that. So I just say, uh, cool it, cool it, cease fire, <laughs> cool it. Let's take okay. the break, and we will get back to you, Bishop, in about a minute and, uh, and a half. <laughs> All right, thank you, thank you. 10.35 is your time right here on Vibes Radio. We have 25 minutes uh, remaining in this uh, segment of the program with our good friend out of uh, New York City. Um, I believe he's uh, locked down right now because it's uh, freezing. He's in a freezer uh, this morning, and uh, it's Bishop Nathaniel. Welcome back, Bishop. Yes, sir. Thank you. Glad to be here. All right, Bishop, before we continue, how can you be contacted? Okay, you can contact me through my website at www.israelunite.org or you can call me at 718-303-9655. All right, thank you so very much. And we're looking at... Uh, uh, the rule slash role of man, and you started out by uh, um, laying the foundation, and uh, let's uh, pick up from where you left off, sir. Yes, sir. Um, when you examine America and Britain, mm -hmm. I will agree primarily with America and all allies, they allow black men to grow up. But they do not allow black men to mature. And when I say mature, I mean take responsibility economically, financially, militarily, the role of a man over their family, community, and people. So black men are brought up on the battle run in a child state of mind, a kiddish mentality. You understand what I mean? Yes. Okay. Uh, 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 now, Yes, sir. Go ahead. No, no, no. You, you, you go ahead. Finish the point, then I'll ask the question. Finish the point. When we go to Proverbs chapter 8, verse 4, okay? Black men are so immature, we can always look for the feet to guide the family, to guide the house. But when you read the Bible, in Proverbs 8, verse 4, it says, Unto you, open I call, and my voice is to the sons of men. We check that because it's been part of this to the woman. Mm -hmm. That the woman at the house. That the woman wears pants. So our paper has been turned upside down. We are backwards, which is why we get no respect in the world. So because of... You, why do you say that the black man is immature vis-a-vis -vis the white man? The black man is immature we are determined whose system of policy is, is the white man. Is a, a white man with a high school degree gets president principal over the black man with college education. Okay? So, economically, the white man is capable of doing business with nation after nation. The black man has not that understanding. He does not have the capability to build infrastructure where he lives. We rely on other races to build and finance us. Mm -hmm. We are a child state of mind. But, but, but um, in fairness, though, Bishop, 
Isn't it because of the way that the black man was taught to do things coming out of the slave trade? So, at, so the, the, um, the black man would be at a disadvantage um, in comparison to the white man. The white man would be a um, hundred step ahead of the black man. Yes, sir. Hundred percent correct. Hundred percent. And what I real didn't find out when we ever men together. All right, Mister. Yes. We ever men to learn the scripture to get out the What I often find with black men is that they are subject to the woman. They can't move without the woman's shape. Oh, that is not the mind of a man. I said, brother, this guy doing work. Oh, I have to ask permission from my wife. What? 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 Where do you get this charm and purity? Okay. Mm -hmm. We must ask permission from a wife to do A, B, or C. That's not biblical. But, but but again, it, it it still applies to the to the um, to the question of uh, slavery because uh, of uh, what transpired then. It is very hard uh, or challenging for for the black man to transcend. And in fairness, though, Bishop, and from the the, the chair that you sit in um, at this time, you'll see that the black population um, we are turning the corner. Especially uh, the men. Yes. A lot of times we like to blame the woman. But it will always start fall back on the man because from Genesis, God established man as the head, the leader. Yes. So we must take a rightful position side. Every black man must stand and take his position in the yeah, but one of the problems that the black man is fine is faced with Bishop is a financial constraint. It is the financial constraint right now that is keeping the black race um, down. Okay, it's, more, it's a little more than that. I'll give you an example. Yes. There was a uh, the, the white man did a a he made a speech. But he said that the subject was reparations. Yes. Hey, this rock, this is what you can do. If you ever go to YouTube, Google this rock, reparations. The next this rock, um, uh, what's that guy's name? Uh, that guy, that big guy, that guy, Dave Chappelle. Dave Chappelle, that's his name. Dave Chappelle did a joke in contrast to what a white man said. If you give reparations to every black man, he said, when vehicles go up, he said, your father's stocks will rise, chicken stocks will drop. He said, and within two months, black men will be back in an impoverished state from where they began. Mm -hmm. And they made a joke out of it, but it's so true, this is a hybrid, and I'll explain why. Mm -hmm. You get Black men a million dollars, right? And if the black man is an adulterer, a liar, or a thief, he will make you done properly because he will lose it. Yes. He must change his state of mind first. Mm -hmm. His mentality must be born again before he can do anything with his family, community, or nation. Okay, I see. All right, what about um, those powerful, I'd say, black men in Babylon, as you put it, the United States, who make a lot of money, the entertainers, the sports um, personnels, and so on in America, who are wealthy. They are always on the television screen, and so on and so forth. Yes, sir. I'm glad you mentioned them. They are used as uh, puppets. They are puppeteers in the hands of white society. If they go in the face of young black men and women as idols, meaning they are not used to benefit their race. They are used to denigrate their race. And what I mean by that is this. Watch this. I mean, first thing is a Chapter 6 and verse 17. It says, Tell them that are rich in this world that they be not 
You said that these um, famous guys, they are puppets. How, uh, what, what can be done to reach out to them so that they know that they are of the chosen generation or the chosen race um, so that they can get back in line um, in the precepts and standards of God? Okay, what we can do, Mr. Hyper, is what we're doing now. We, you and I, and the other men who are raising up, we must preach this truth wherever we are, whenever we can, so that we can hear this to be the only thing that can break the spell of slavery in the Bible. The God law is the only thing that can break the spell, Mr. Hyper. They must hear the gospel. They must hear this truth to wake up. And we must be careful. And we must stop living check to check, Mr. Hyper. What I realize, Mr. Hyper, is this. You have entertainers. Let's say, how much do you think an entertainer makes an entertainer? Can you come up? Hey, tell me. Uh, I'm sorry. I, 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 I missed you there, Bishop. Okay. What, what do you think a, the average, average is for an entertainer or an athlete, give me a number, a, a, a number, a big number, give me a number. An, an average age for an entertainer, that's what you said? Yes, how much do you think on the average they would make? Oh, millions, uh, millions, 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 millions. Okay, let's, let's say, let's say, I'll give it small, let's say $10 million, okay? Right. With, with just one million, with just one million, Mr. Hyper, not only can he or she live comfortably, he or she will just live there and take care of several families. If you decide the Chinese do it, the Indians do it, the Arabs do it. Do you feel that the black race is the only race that stands and is afraid to help their people? Uh, that's a big point you're making, Nadia. Uh, uh, we have seen that. We have seen that. As soon as, uh, um, you know, the wealth start coming, as you rightfully said earlier, they move into another neighborhood, or in America, you say, uh, another suburb. Yeah. And the Bible has solutions for poverty in the side. When you read Acts chapter 4, the church distributed every man according to his need. But these churches pray off poor. They leak off the poor. You understand what I'm saying? Just like these, these happily separate from us, the church pulls from us, so we have down and out, Mr. Hyper. Yeah. Only the work of God can redeem us through Jesus Christ, the black Messiah. Only the Bible can give us answers and solutions. Are, are you saying that these the churches that are are around town nowadays are abound here in Jamaica and uh, around the world? They are uh, also connected to the Edomites because they are not uh, preaching the true gospel. Uh, uh, that's what is that what you're you're saying? Yes, the churches are extension of Babylon, and the proof is. They beat white men Jesus, which none of them can prove. Every religion they raised is solved by some white men, and then they take the money from the poor and feed them poor. This is further proof that they are new nationalists like Jesus Christ was. Jesus Christ said, I am not so part of the Lord Chief of the House of Israel. These ministers teach that. You understand? Yes. Yeah. Okay? Now, Mr. 
Churches are uh, based on what you're saying that you know they are an extension um, of uh, the uh, Caucasian race, the Edomites. The Edomites. What about the churches who help in um, uh, by helping the black communities, feeding them, educating them? I know that you're gonna um, especially talk on the education side, educating them and, and so on and. And in truth and in fairness, if it wasn't the intervention of a lot of the churches, a lot of these, um, let's say, African Americans, um, they wouldn't be uh, getting by. Okay, I'm going to the point. These churches kill with I understand. What about what about um, the church now uh, that says that um, you know, black people were are black uh, uh, because of sin? Uh, they have a big organization in Utah. What about um, the, the the church that says um, to be black is a sin? something something just popped right in my brain as you said that you said all men are all at the creation they look alike so uh, the white man did he look like the black man Are you saying that in the beginning there 
were no white man that's what you're saying the white man the, the white man came after delve into that another time for sure for sure so 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 so, so you're saying that it is the spirit it is a spirit not the literal uh, uh man per se so the, the, the so when that uh spirit came upon him he became caucasian well give me the understanding of that And uh, thank you so very much. We do apologize for that uh, break in transmission um, uh, from our studios here in Sablamar. We are now back with our listeners on the frequency of 96.1 and 96.3. And we are also back with our good friend Bishop Nathaniel um, in New York City. All right, Bishop, uh, let's continue. Um, we got we got disconnected, I guess, um, as I raised the question about um, interracial marriage, saying that um, from a biblical um, a point of view, you are saying that um, uh, the Bible does not support interracial marriage. Correct. Bible does not support. Now, as we discussed earlier, Mr. Hyper, as soon as a black man makes substantial amount of money, he marries. with that it's always the other way around the rich uh, black men marrying uh, nine times out of ten uh, poor white women Yes. The righteous army. We can establish our own businesses right now. Mm -hmm. 
challenge that we face now bishop nathaniel is the the unity because even with the churches um the churches that we have now um there's a big divide some say to go on saturday some um, to keep the sabbath some says the first day of the week some baptize in the name of jesus others in the name of father son and holy ghost there are big differences even in christendom on the speaking of tongues should woman preach should woman cover their head should they cream their hair so all of these things add to um uh, the, the the abundance of uh, of things out there that divides the black man and woman. Yes, that's why all these churches, Mr. Hyper, that fall under Babylon. Let's go to another state. All these churches fall under Babylon. All these churches must go unless they can repent. My friend, I have to pray that the Lord gave us John 17. Christ said. Repent to them whom thou hast given Christ be not for the world. The ones given to Christ for the Israelites, the twelve apostles of the nation of Israel. Yes. Not Baptists, not Muslims, not some of the Adventists, but the Israelites. Until we stand as Israelites, we will always be divided. We will always be on the battle. Well, can I, let me ask you the final question because we are over time, my friend. Um, will there be any Christian in the promised land or in heaven? Will there be any Christian? <laughs> Will there be any Christians? Listen, the doctrine of Christianity yes. will die when America is destroyed. All of that Christian, when I say Christianity is hyper, I'm talking about Sunday worship, white man worship, Christmas worship, Mother's Day worship. That's what I'm talking about. All that will go and America is destroyed. Then and the only thing will the world fall under the word of God. And all the nations will bow to the word of God under the Israelites. All right. Thank you so very much on that powerful note, my friend. It seems as if you um, are you have gotten rejuvenated from the cruise to um, the Bahamas and uh, Saint Thomas and the other islands that you visited. <laughs> hey, the word of God always rejuvenates me. When I discuss scripture, Mr. Hyper, that invigorates me. That makes me lively. I love it, and I love you, and I love the love of you. Yes. And unify as one. Like Tessa and I have two in one's command. Get yourself together, O nation not desired. Get gather together. We must obey. We must obey. We must obey. God bless you, sir, and uh, all the best to you and the brethren on that side of uh, the world. You take care and you stay warm, safe, and dry. All being well, we'll talk with you next Tuesday. Yes, sir. And how can you be? And how can you be contacted just before you leave us, sir? Yes, sir. Please contact me via website. W W W And you can tell us when you're going to take a cruise to Jamaica because it seems as if you're a man that loved the sea and not just the Sea of Galilee, but probably you'll take a trek on the Caribbean Sea and dock somewhere in the Grail, Montego Bay or Kingston or Ocho Reyes. Oh, yeah. I'm coming. I'm coming. I'll be there. <laughs> oh, all right, my friend. All the best. Okay. God bless. All right. Hello, I'm Israel. I'm Elton Nathaniel, Israel United in Christ.
YouTube likes to shut our channels down, as some of you have noticed, <laughs> ever so often. Subscribing to join IUIC will assure you will always stay connected to our YouTube accounts. We want to do our best to make sure this truth gets up. Please click and join our subscriber YouTube channel called Join IUIC to stay linked to all of our videos. So again, please make sure you subscribe to this Join IUIC channel to get your latest updates from all our YouTube channels. Shalom.